Wow, that really prepared our hearts as women to be surrendered. Thank you, Linda. My title this afternoon is Blessed with a Partner in the Gospel. My name is Courtney Parlor, and it is an honor to serve in the Rock Geographic sector. Thank you so much, Linda, for this opportunity to speak today. I know I did not write the program, if you're wondering if I put myself on here. Um, but I just want to say I'm so grateful to speak amongst partners in the gospel. And um, it's, it's a blessing that we all get to have this dynamic with each other. I'm so grateful to Emma. I've gained much insight from her leadership in my life about biblical partnership by observing and experiencing her incredible example. In 1936, the University of Washington rowing team made a bold decision to enter their junior varsity boat into a crucial Olympic qualifying competition rather than their top varsity team. And they qualified for the Olympics. Rowing is described as a highly challenging sport that requires perfect synchronization among all team members, with every rower needing to work in harmony. Joe, a rower on this team, was notably faster than all the others. But because his focus was on himself, the coach asked Joe to take a break from the team right before the Olympics. The coach told him, it's not about you, Joe, or me, or anybody else. It is about the boat. I believe we need to embrace this same heart. It's not about me, it's not about you. It is about God and getting the gospel all around the world. Let's open our Bibles to Philippians 1, verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I pray with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. The phrase partner in the gospel comes from the book of Philippians. This word partnership is a well-known Greek word, koinonia, often translated as fellowship, a sharing in something, contributing toward, to cooperate, participating in something divine and eternal, something greater than we could ever do on our own. It is a partnership created by God, sustained by God, and centered on love. We are all partners in the gospel. We can look at these biblical concepts on a global scale or a local scale. Philippians 1.27 says, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Relationships in the kingdom are a gift. We are a movement, so there's constant movement. And that's so incredible because we're able to give our hearts more and more and embrace new relationships. So I want to highlight seven practicals, short practicals from the book of Philippians about partnership. Number one, Christ at the center of the relationship. Barriers we put up in relationships can hinder the gospel going out. Philippians 3 verse 10. Our relationships have one foundation and one purpose. It is founded on God and its purpose is to bring glory to God. Two, be a team. Philippians 1.27. Do not be competitive or comparative. Create a Christ-centered environment that helps others to thrive. Three, humility. Philippians 
Consider others better than yourself. Welcome each other's ideas. Seek to understand each other's differences. I find that I get the most critical toward others when I lack understanding. We need to value others and not use them as step ladders for our own ambitions. Number four, imitate. You know, I believe in 2024 that there is a lost art of imitation. I remember when I was an intern, I wanted to buy the same pad that my discipler was riding on. I wanted the same pen. I wanted the same Bible. I wanted to dress the same, talk the same, act the same, live the same. We live in a self-focused world, and there's a lost art of imitation. Philippians 3.17, imitate the Christ in each other. Imitate their way of life. Number five, have vision. Philippians 1, 6, there's a confidence in one another that we will carry our faith on to completion. Inspire confidence in each other. Invest in each other's lives and support each other's growth. Number six, focus on the same goal. Shared visions and goals. Every addition happens because of partnership. Some plant some water, but God makes it grow. And as Philippians 3.14 says, the ultimate goal is heaven. Lastly, live, to get, live life together. Philippians 2.2 2 in the message says, agree with each other, love each other, and be deep-spirited friends. Get to know each other. Get to know each other's families. Celebrate life together. Celebrate victories together. Despite facing numerous setbacks, that University of Washington junior varsity rowing team made it to the Olympics. During the final stretch of their race, they chanted, as one, as one, as one, in a reflective moment. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> I watched this movie on the plane and I was bawling, by the way. Um, Joe was retelling the story to his grandson. The grandson said, hey, Grandpa, did you like rowing eight men? The grandpa responded, eight? We were never eight. We were one. Our challenge today, my sisters, is to labor and contend as one. May we walk away focused on acknowledging who we are as sisters. We are partners in the gospel. Together we compose the body of Christ. We must walk like him, talk like him, serve like him, preach like him, contend like him, love like him. We will evangelize the world as one. Thank you, my sisters. <laughs>